Hello everyone, Mike Hoffman here with another video tip recorded for TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. Remember, for all kinds of Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Today in Photoshop, we're going to be talking about patterns and using patterns within Photoshop. There are a couple of different ways that you might go about this, and we're going to explore the benefits and drawbacks of each. You typically access patterns from the Fill command by choosing Edit Fill, and then you can choose here in the Contents section, Black, White, or Gray, but you can also choose Pattern. And when you do, you get a list of patterns, including the pervasive bubbles pattern, which has been around for ages. But you're not limited to these. You can create your own. And in fact, Photoshop ships with an entire list of patterns that you can access with this gear icon right here. Simply click the gear and you get the list. And you can choose, for example, this set of patterns right here. And we'll just replace the list. And now we've got a larger variety of patterns. If you've created your own patterns, which is a topic for another tutorial on another day, you can actually load them right from here as well. Simply choose the .pat file that you created when you saved your patterns. And now we can see at the bottom that we've got some additional patterns that I've created and saved on my own. Now what we do is to use the pattern, we simply choose it and now we're set to fill with the pattern and we click OK. There is no other control for this and if we don't like the size of the pattern, if we don't like the scale of it, we're pretty much out of luck. And that really makes a difference if, for example, we want to fill a shape such as this text. With this text we can command click on the layer thumbnail and that will load a selection and you can see the marching ants there. We'll turn that layer off and now with the selection active we can access the fill command again by choosing shift F5 and that brings up the fill and this time if we choose our pattern we can see it's constrained within the selection that we have but once again there's no mechanism for controlling the scale. We're sort of at the mercy of the size at which the pattern was originally created. However, there is a better way. And we'll just undo that with Command Z. And then we'll activate this text layer once again. Now with this layer active, we'll simply go down here to the FX icon and choose Pattern Overlay. When we choose Pattern Overlay, we see immediately the bubbles once again, which is our default pattern. However, we can access this drop-down list, and once again, here are the patterns that we've got loaded currently. If we click this one, which is Wicker 2, we can see that it looks just about the same as it did before. It's quite large, and it doesn't really look well constrained within the text. However, within the layer styles is a scale slider, and this is what makes using patterns as a layer style so much more effective. We can simply take this scale slider and go up or down, and we can make this pattern as large or small as we like to make it fit the needs that we have. So here we've got a much smaller scale. It looks a lot nicer within the bounds of the text, and I like that much better. And this is all made possible by the scale slider within the Layer Styles dialog box. Once we dismiss this, we can see the pattern overlay shows up here, and we can get back to it at any time, and we can even change the pattern to a different pattern if we like, and once again, adjust the scale to taste, and there we have it. So there you have two ways of applying patterns within Photoshop and I'm going to recommend the pattern overlay layer style as the most versatile and customizable approach to adding your patterns within Photoshop. 
My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography and Photoshop tutorials and related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter. And you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tip today on Tip Squirrel.